Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Chef and Happiness from the Code Chef November 2018 Long Challenge. The problem states you are given a sequence A1 to AN, and you need to determine if it is possible to choose two indices I and J such that AI does not equal AJ, but A of AI equals A of AJ. If it was possible, Chef would be truly happy. So this is uh, extremely confusing, but hopefully uh, it'll make more sense when we take a look at the examples. For each test case, print a single line containing the string truly happy if it is possible to choose required indices or poor chef otherwise. And the constraints for this problem are that T, the number of test cases, will be between 1 and 1,000, and the number of numbers in our array will be between 1 and 10 to the 5, and the values of our elements in our array will be, will be between 1 and n. And it also gives us that the sum of n over all the test cases won't exceed 2 times times 10 to the fifth. So let's take a look at the examples that Code Chef provided us with. So here are the four examples. Note that the first integer is t, the number of test cases, and then for each test case we have two lines. The first line is just going to contain a single integer n, which is the number of elements in our array a, and the second line will contain n integers representing the values of the elements in our array a. And it shows us that uh, it'll be possible for Chef to be happy for the first example and the fourth example, but not for the second and the third. And Code Chef uh, kindly provided us with explanations uh, for the first two examples. So it says for case one, Chef is truly happy because A at A3 is equal to A at A1, but A3 does not equal A1. So note that these arrays are one indexed, not zero indexed. So uh, it's referring to the first element and the third element, which here is the value 1 uh, and the value 2. So those do not equal each other. But if we use those values as indexes uh, to look up two new values, so we want to look at the first element and the second element, uh, we want those to be equal. So the first and second elements are equal. So the only way Chef can be happy at a minimum is if there are uh, elements that have the same value. And then the second condition is that we need to find two elements that when the values of those elements are used as indexes uh, lead to the value, the elements with the same value. And then on top of that we need to make sure that uh, you're not just finding two elements that originally had the same value so then they're pointing to sort of the same element. Um, so for the second case, it's not possible, neither for the third case, but for the fourth case, it is possible. And if you work through it, you can see that the elements at the uh, third and fourth indexes are equal to each other, and that uh, the first element and the last element point to those two elements. So the elements at index three and four uh, are not equal to each other and uh, they result in finding two elements with the value of one. So stated, it looks like this. Uh, so this problem is a bit you know, difficult to wrap your head around, um, but once you have wrapped your head around it uh, and you understand what it's asking for, it's actually pretty straightforward to solve. And you can do it purely just using data structures. And the way we're going to solve this is using a hash map where the key is uh, the value of an element. And uh, the value of our hash map is going to be a hash set of element values that lead to it. So in, in the example of our last case, we're basically going to end up with a uh, hash map and the element value that is going to have a hash set with a size greater than one will be uh, the key of one. So basically we'll have a key of one and then the hash set the hash set that is the value attached to that key is going to contain all of the element values that can lead to that. So we'll end up with a hash set of the values 3 and 4. So as long as you in your hash map have at least one key value pair where the hash set has a size that's greater than 1, that means that you can you can find uh, basically four elements that satisfy uh, this requirement here. So let's work through one of these examples to get a better sense of what this is actually doing. So let's look at the first example here. So the first thing to do with our example is to change it from a one indexed array to a zero indexed array because nobody likes working with one indexed arrays. 
So here are the values uh, because we need to change them because each of them can represent an index. So we have 0, 0, 1, 2, and then M will represent our hash map here. So initially it's empty, but uh, as we go through our array, we will end up filling up our hash map. So we take a look at our first element, which is 0, and if we use this as an index, it will lead us to itself. Uh, so the value that it's that it leads to is zero, and uh, the value is also uh, zero that leads to it. Um, so that just gives us zero for our key, and then zero uh, for the value that leads to it in our hash set. When we move on to our second element, it's actually just the same thing. So zero ends up leading to zero. Um, so because this is a hash set. Uh, we are not going to be growing it because it doesn't store duplicates. And so looking at the second element doesn't actually change our hash map. If we look at our uh, third element, it has a value of 1. And if we use this as an index, it will lead us uh, to this element here, which has a value of 0. So we use the value that it, that leads to, that it leads to as our key, and then the hash set that's associated with that will have the value that ended up leading to it, which was 1, that gets added to our hash set. And for our last element, 2, uh, so 2 will be what gets added to a hash set, and if we use this as an index, it will lead us to the second element, which has a value of 1, so then we use this as our key, and then the associated hash set has the value 2 added to it. So this is what our hash map looks like after we've processed our whole array. And then in order to make Chef happy, we basically want to find a key value pair that has a hash set that is greater than uh, 2. The size of our hash set is greater than 1, sorry, that has at least two elements, because then we can find a pair of elements that leads to um, a value that's equal to each other. Uh, so hopefully this makes sense. It, like I said, it's a pretty difficult problem to wrap your head around, but as soon as you do that, it's actually pretty straightforward to solve. You just uh, set up a map, and then uh, for each of the values that can you can arrive at, you need to store all of the different values that can lead to it. And if we can find um, a set of those values that is greater than one, which means we can find at least one pair, you've solved the problem. So let's take a look at our code. So here is our C++ solution. We've got a macro at the top here, just to make it a little bit faster to write for loops. And at the top of our uh, function, our main function here, we're reading in t the number of test cases. And then for each test case, we're going to read in n the number of values in our array. And then we're setting up a vector of integers here. And we're going to read in each one of the values on the second line of each test case. And note that we are doing a pre-decrement here to get uh, our values zero indexed. And then we're setting up our hash map here, m. So you can see here, unordered map in C++ is our hash map. And we're using an integer for our key. And for our value, we're using a hash set, which is the under unordered set. And then uh, we have our main line of our whole uh, code or solution here. So we're looping through each of the values in our array or our vector. And then we're inserting the value that you arrive at, which you get by uh, using the value that we're currently at as an index, uh, and then using that index, so vi, to get the value at that index, which we get by just using passing that as an index to v. And then so that is our key. And then we want to insert the value that we started at, which is just vi. And so once you've done this, we can just use our any of algorithm to check that any of the hash sets in our key value pairs in our hash map have a size greater than one, which will represent that we have two elements where the values are not equal, but that lead to two other elements where the values are equal. And uh, this will give us a Boolean. And if the Boolean's true, we're going to output truly happy, else we're going to output poor chef. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which for this problem is going to be big O of t times n, because we have t test cases we need to process. And we are going to do n insertions on a hash set, uh, which will be constant. Uh, note that worst case, it technically could be linear, but on average, it will be constant. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.